Yeah, today um, I want to talk about one of the books that I uh, I wrote, and it's based upon uh, well, one half of it's based upon the uh, Chinese scholar Song Su, uh, who actually wrote the book The Art of War, and the other part is is the based upon Buddhist training, and that's why we have the art of war and peace. Because uh, in my writings, I, uh, I've put as, as it is in peace, so it's, as it is in war, so is it in peace. That the essence of, of success is something that is generated uh, through knowledge and experience. And the foundation and basis that brings victory in terms of conflict is the same thing that brings victory in terms of, of our peaceful endeavors. So we have here the art of war and peace. Uh, my name is uh, Jumbo Kunjo, Gelong Jumbo Kunjo. Last name is Prior, that's my Western name. Jumbo Kunjo is my Tibetan name. And underneath there, I've written the uh, uh, developing our candlelight candlelight like wisdom. And this is uh, based upon one of my teachers, Geshe uh, uh, Kaza. Uh, Geshe, uh, Kaza. Geshe Tupte Yeshe. Yeah. My Tupte Yeshe. And uh, he would always say this, you know, because, you know, in the process of, of learning, right, the process of learning is a process of development and the development initially is, is that our our minds are are like that of a of a candle you know the, when you take a candle and you burn it right and what happens is that if there's any air or anything that might be say if you have it in a house and it starts to flicker a little bit you know it will flicker a little bit and what happens is that the ability to be able to see you know what's in the house becomes it becomes it becomes limited because of the reason of the disturbance that's coming in uh, into the room. So it might be because of a window or whatever it is that's causing the candlelight itself to flicker. You know, but if we continue to practice or whatnot, we have the capability in order to close these these windows. We eliminate the winds of disturbances. And the only way to really do that is through the method of, uh, of learning by the method of training. You know, there are many different sayings or schools or people who will talk about, you know, how you contemplate and they talk in terms of contemplation as being something that is, uh, that you maybe you can just shut off, like you would shut off a light, stop thinking. And, you know, somehow the problems of, you know, of one's life will actually go away. The reality is, is that, uh, you know, if you are in a room and you shut off the light, you know, you, you still will have the same problems that the, the chairs and, you know, everything, whatever obstacles there are within that room, it still be poses a problem to us, right? So in, uh, in contemplating uh, the Buddhists, this is the Buddhist method of thought, the notion of, of uh, understanding or becoming or overcoming the problems that we have, right? Now, this is something that has to be done through contemplation and understanding, identification, right? Hearing, the, hearing exactly what, what is necessary you hear it, then you, you are on hearing it, then you have the capa capability of contemplating it. And then only after hearing a long term of hearing and contemplating whether what is being said is being true or false, then we have the capability of actually doing meditation, right? Meditation is not the, is not the elimination of, of thought, but the incorporation of thought in the correct way. Anila, you said you wanted to say something? Yeah, I have a question. You mentioned yeah. that uh, this disturbances of mind are pacified by learning. 
can you explain why of all the methods learning pacifies the mind? Well, you have to know what obstacles, you know, in, in meditation is a process of elimination of obstacles. If you don't have the capability of understanding what those obstacles are, then you have no, you have no possibility of eliminating. We eliminate obstacles through the process of, of antidotes, right? When the antidote of, of a particular thing grows stronger, through understanding, then the obstacle itself will start to decrease. So it's not only the idea, you have to identify what the obstacle is, but you also have to apply it to the problem. And when you just shut off all your thoughts and everything like that, that has nothing to do with, with identifying what the problem is, right? Does that make sense? Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, that, that's, you know, it's just like, in, in reality, what we're doing right now in the discussion that we're having now is a discussion that uh, it entitles a lot of thinking. We're actually going through the steps of thinking out in certain conditions and situations what we should or should not do. And the basis of this book is to be able to set forth a template, right? A foundation. So when you have a te template or rules that you abide by, what happens is that it, when you start to, to, to lose direction, you start to flounder a little bit. That if you remember the rules that abide, that show you the direction that you should be going and you believe in the rules and you have faith in the rules because you've examined the rules, then you will not allow yourself to go beyond a certain, a certain level. You'll be able to apply antidotes to that particular, even things as simple, say if a person has the tendency of, of, uh, of killing or harming other people and they, they learn in their, uh, uh, you know, through the teachings that, well, you know, harming others is bad what happens is that we've set a we've set something to remind even though we might have anger or whatnot arise within us we eliminate the uh the possibility of being of engaging ourselves in that right and this is the beginning the stronger and the more that you do this right the more it becomes it, it becomes something that we we have the capability of doing so what we're going to do is uh, uh, start a discourse based upon the art of war and peace. And we're gonna go through the book and we're going to talk about the various aspects of, you know, a practice or contemplation. And uh, I think that this is, uh, I think that this will be very interesting to many, many people and, uh, and help us guide. The next time we talk, we'll talk a little bit about the symbols that we have here and why this is a uh, Yama, it's the Lord of Death, you know, and, uh, you know, why, you know, how does this re reflect to the idea of the book itself? Okay? Thank you. And for those who are listening, please subscribe, like the video, um, and see you next time. Good. Thank you very much.